Well, welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm. This week we've been working really hard on just restyling all the gardens and also just kind of getting some of the weeds out. Um, we had some of the rosemary that was dying back and we just had, we had some holes due to some trees falling and I haven't picked up trees yet. I'm not gonna do it until this fall. So I thought, well, I'm gonna throw in some dahlias there just to kind of fill the space. And then uh, we got a big pile of compost, which I'm using as a mulch this year. So a lot of times I'll use like a bark chip or something like that, and um, which is readily available in our area. There's lots of different mulches that you can use. Um, but this year it was actually less expensive to buy a compost to put down. And it's a beautiful color. It's deep, deep, dark brown. Um, and I'm just using it just like you would any other, just a kind of weed suppressant. And it looks really pretty. We've been really hot and dry here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, today is the first overcast day, so I'm going to be wheelbarrowing as much as of that mulch that I can. I think I have 10 yards to put out. And we've put out some of it already. Jason's gonna help me, the kids are gonna help me today, which is gonna be fabulous because um, I have some muscle, but you know, it's a lot of work. So uh, I thought you could join me, but first of all, I wanted to show you some of the things I got from the nursery. So I went to two nurseries. One was Dancing Oaks, which is kind of to the south of us a little ways. They're kind of down a dirt road and gated, and it's very like, um, I don't think a lot of people know about it other than you might know about it online. So they sell a lot of a product online. They have an online catalog, and they're really well known for a lot of their Japanese maples, very rare varieties and uh, drought tolerant varieties. And that's the reason I went, is I'm working on that Mediterranean garden that I, I hope to start maybe tonight tomorrow I don't know I have 10 yards of compost to put out so I just am so excited to start on us so I went there just to get some ideas and I have some ideas now in my head that I want to do I'm just gonna get the bones done for now and then I'm gonna plant that up probably this fall maybe sooner we'll see I don't know and so they're really they have some really really cool things so we did get some fun funky things um, my son bought a few things for his pond that he's putting in and um, yeah they're really well known for like shade garden and just you know cool stuff so check them out I'll put a link below also I went to Garland's nursery it's one of my favorite nurseries and it's down kind of towards um, Albany area which is again south of us I went there I just love going there because it's just a beautiful nursery uh, Wavra is the other nursery that we go to all the time and they're out by Silverton um, area so a little bit east of us but those are my three spots that I love to go to just to pick up some fun things. I'm gonna show you what I got from the two nurseries and I'm not an expert at all the Latin names so I'm gonna hold the tags up so you can kind of see that. Um, if you're kind of a plant geek and like to know all of the, the little names and stuff like that, I, I usually go by texture and look more than the name, but um, I'm learning. I'm learning the names, so I'm really trying to do a better job of that. Now, retaining it up here is a totally different story. I'm not gonna guarantee that's gonna last very long. Okay, so here we go. So I'm just gonna show you each plant that I got from Dancing Oaks. We didn't get too much, but um, what I got is really kind of cool. So I thought you might like to see it. So this guy, this one almost looks like maiden hair fern. I don't know if you can see that's really tall, very airy. It's a shade loving and they took the tag out of this one. So I don't know what it is. So if you know what it is, uh, please bop that into the comments. But I loved how airy it is and it gets huge. I saw some there that were as tall as me. So like five foot, uh, maybe it's because they like the soil, but 
it's really really fun so that one's gonna go in the shade garden I think up front here by the house not totally for sure yet so this is really pretty this is called crimson glory vine so this is ty a type of grapevine that gets huge and it is it was growing up this beautiful tree it was like an oak tree that was growing up so Braden got this for his pond area that's just gonna kind of grow up looking a little more more like um, tropical and um, it was really really pretty but uh, crimson glory vine so the next one I have a giant feather grass which I loved how these like little dancing ends were and as this gets bigger it's going to have tons of that just really airy feel to it and you're going to be able to see through it which I like some some grasses get huge and you just it's just this mound of like these fronds and not a lot of the beautifulness so this one is giant feather grass and Again, this was Dancing Oak, so if you wanted to order it, you could um, off their website. I love a really fun fern, and this one was just the cutest. I think I'm gonna actually pot it up and put it on the front porch. So a lot of these shade-loving stuff, I like to style the porch, and I haven't done that this year yet. So I'm gonna do that today. But then in the winter time, what I'm gonna do is take all those pots and put them in the cottage greenhouse. Uh, for the winter, but I think I, I'm not sure if it will die back or not, but um, This is a Victoria lady fern and again, this is from Dancing Oak So if you're interested, they have some really cool ferns, but that's the tag on that one So I also just got some fuchsias. I'm I love fuchsias. They it was like my very first hanging basket I ever got and uh, Braden and I ended up getting one fuchsia basket, not from Dancing Oaks, but we got it from Garland's Nursery. But I bought two from Dancing Oaks, and these are just, you know, your plain, um, it's a hardy fuchsia. This one is the Bronze Black Cherry, which it opens up kind of like this picture here. It's not opened yet, but I love that deep, deep burgundy purple underneath and that more upright habit to it. The other fuchsia we got is not blooming yet, but it has, I believe, the little red kind of bright, which we have a lot of hummingbirds, so it's kind of nice to have something like that. Um, this one's called Purple Mountain Fuchsia. So again, this one's just gonna go up by the front garden pots, and these will come back every year for me. They do because they're a little bit sheltered, and um, every once in a while they die and I have to buy new ones, but for the most part they come back huge and beautiful. They just love that spot. So I wanted some salvias. I have found that I love salvias and over the last couple of years I've kind of collected a few and I know you can take cuttings. I don't know how to do that yet, but I'm gonna learn. This one is the Salvia Forever Blue. Uh, this is beautiful. I love that and I also have that is it the black one where it has the black stem black and blue or something like that it's called i'll look i have it in the garden i planted those last year these i got because they get really really tall they get a little over three feet tall and i wanted that for a backdrop in the garden um blue is my favorite color and then i love just that cottage feel to it with the blues and whites and pinks and you know just some pops of color through it and so that's we got three of these from dancing oaks as well and i know you can pick those up at any nursery but again sometimes salvia certain salvias that you're looking for are kind of harder to find um so i just found these and i wanted those tall ones and uh so i got three of these to pop in around i think we're doing them in the circle garden along with the grass not totally for sure So what I got from Garland's Nursery was more things that I wanted to style the front porch with and again I haven't had time to do it and uh, this was the first kind of day that I was free to do it and nobody's, I mean all the staff is not here on the farm and so it's just kind of nice for me to focus on something fun that's more personal than you know. So I've had these plants for a little while and um, or some of the plants for a little while and um, I've just kind of kept them watered um, for a free day that I can just you know pour a cup of coffee and style the porches and then pop a few fun things into the gardens and then mulch and then you know goes from there so I need to clean this up because we've had a lot of wind and uh, this begonia has <laughs> been tattered a little bit uh, 
anyways it'll it'll look good now but I'm gonna trim it back a little bit but this is um, Miss Malibu Isn't that pretty kind of a fuchsia color the next little gem I got is of course it's got to have this little pop of blue into it but this is Tarina um, a type of Tarina so this is blue um, I didn't know, like, I've never grown this before, but I'm gonna mix it into one of the pots on the front porch. And again, it gets a little bit of sun, like um, half sun, half shade kind of, but I thought that was just really kind of interesting. And they get pretty big actually um, for containers. So it'll look really pretty when it's all done. So I got an Impatient as well, which is kind of this fuchsia color. This one's called Glimmer Burgundy. And I loved just that really pop of deep, deep fuchsia color. So all the colors are kind of jeweled tone this year, which last year I think I went more like in just the plain blues and pinks, but this year everything is really like vibrant. So I also got a couple coleuses, Perilla Magilla. <laughs> I'm like, who comes up with these names? Anyways, it's pretty. I think I said that right. This one's Tall, tall Tail Heart. And I liked that one too, just because that limey green color, that little pop of green, and it just makes the two together going to be really pretty with the fuchsia and um, the begonia just being that bright corally color. Very fun. So I, I got another begonia. Braden saw this as we were leaving, but it's got these absolutely ginormous leaves on it. This is begonia T-Rex Stardust. Uh, really, really fun color and this one also I'm just gonna pot up and then put it in to the house probably um, begonias do really well indoors so if you can do that bring them outside inside and in fact in the cottage greenhouse I have all those succulents I'm gonna bring out some of them and style the top table today just to kind of give them a vacation from the little greenhouse so um, I'll be doing that as well so I got a couple of these garden flocks and this one is Phlox Sweet Summer and it's a snow white. I have been looking for a white phlox. My sister in her garden has the one I wrote the book with. She has this amazing wall of white phlox and I've always meant to get cuttings or tubers from her and it's just never worked out. I tried getting some from the garden show up in uh, Seattle one year and I put them in the ground nothing happened so big healthy plants bought that so the fuchsia that I got for the porch as well a hanging basket Braden and I picked it out and that one is called Sir Matt Busby and it's really fun because it's got that bright kind of hot red color to the top and then the underside is kind of that pale pale pink and looks like a marshmallow they're super super fun and I thought just that bright color in this dark spot our front porch is kind of shaded by some ponderosa pines and then we also have another other couple like blue it's not a blue spruce but I'm not sure what it is it's a blue color um, pine like the one right behind me um, just beautiful but it also makes our front porch a little bit dark so I wanted some bright colors this year so I did get a few other things for the vegetable garden um, but we can talk about that maybe later so for now let's head into the cottage greenhouse and find some pots and get some soil and start styling the front porch and then we're going to move out into the gardens and kind of style the long table for um, we're just starting to host some events here on the farm and so it's time for us to kind of get it the farm kind of zhuzhed up we got to clean up you know put the mulch down make it look good I don't know take care of the weeds so I hope you enjoy this video So the hanging baskets, I just wanted to give you a quick little update on them, but they are coming along beautiful. Some of these are the ones that I planted up late with some of the extra starts, but these are all sold off, which is really nice. We're going to take them out to a place that wants to use them just at their venue. And so I'm excited about that. Um, I liked how they are all styled here next to my studio, but um, it is time for them to go and be enjoyed by other folks. But I love some of the color combinations that came out. This was definitely a learning year for me. And so next year I'll have a much better understanding of how hanging baskets work 
and just the whole process of putting them together and growing them in time for Mother's Day. So I'm just gonna head out to the cottage greenhouse and grab some terracotta pots, hopefully we have some in there, just to make up the rest of the pots for the front porch. So I have all these succulents and some of them just need to get outside and I'm thinking to just put them on the long table like I've done before. Just a few of them. But um, they're just beautiful and they, they love it in here, but they also need some fresh air, I think. Down here we have a whole bunch of mum starts that still need to go out. I'm kind of behind on that. I don't even know how many trays, but that's for fall and we need to get them in the ground this week. So that'll be happening. Okay, so some of these terracotta pots that I have are really, really old. They are from my grandma's. This one's kind of not doing so well, so I don't know if I'm going to actually use it. It's chipped off on the top, so I think that guy I'm just going to retire. These two here are asparagus ferns, and I think I'm going to pull those out and put them on the front porch as well, because I think that would look really, really cool, or at least one of them. More mum starts, and yeah, so I'm, I think... Um, I'll grab some of these, get them outside onto the long table there that looks really pathetic and uh, grab some more pots. So these two pots on either side, I'm going to put a rose bush in and take these, take the two olives out and put them in the new Mediterranean garden. But these just have like bulbs in them. I'm going to pull those out and just use them on the front porch because I think that would look really really good maybe a few things here we'll see It's such a cool, beautiful morning, just kind of overcast, that I think I'm just gonna work out here on the long table and just get all of the uh, pots cleaned up and then just dump all the soil that is in the pots into the wheelbarrow, take it to the compost. You know, it's just easier that way. So I'm gonna do that, make a mess here on the long table. And yeah, so gather my ingredients and put it together. So I'm just going to lay out the plants so I can see them really well and be able to design with them um, appropriately. So I like to kind of space them out and then give me room to kind of see everything.
So I have just went ahead and laid out kind of the design I'm thinking in my head when I was picking these plants and I'm liking how they're coming out. I might switch a few things around. I definitely need a stake for this fern looking plant, which I don't know the name of, but um, I'll go see if I can find like a bamboo stick or something like that and put it in. But overall, I'm kind of liking how this is looking so far. So I'm going to load up the pots and take them up front to the front porch and get them watered in with a little bit of fertilizer and then I'm going to start on styling the table and then I'm going to head in and plant those flocks, the white flocks and a few, um, the salvias as well and just get those in the ground and watered and then I'm going to start on the mulch. This time of year us gardeners like to putz and putzing is what we do best especially in the morning time because it's nice and cool it's the start of the day we've had a nice refreshing sleep and coffee well me coffee but um, it's just kind of a special time of day that we really get to appreciate the garden anyways today I'm appreciating the garden uh, there's times especially because we grow flowers and other things for a living that, you know, it can be a little bit um, challenging to do something like I'm doing today, uh, just to squeak it in and be able to relax enough to enjoy the process. But today I'm definitely enjoying the process. Um, I'm gonna finish up on the front porch with two of these um, fuchsias. These are the ones that have that bright red that is um, a hardy fuchsia. And so this one loves shade to part shade. I have to plant them every couple of years, but the hummingbirds absolutely love them. And these get huge. So they have that bright red little trumpet. And so here, when you come out um, in this little garden area right off the porch, uh, you can hear them in the morning or see them. And it's just, it's so fun, it's so fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh these pots. I see that there is actually one from last year that's coming back but i think it needs a little more sun that variety for some reason has struggled so i might actually move it to another pot and see if it does better so this is the little spot that i want to work in today it has hardly anything of color or worthy of looking at but um, I think I can improve that so that next year it will look amazing. We did have some beautiful blue lupin that is done blooming. We cut back the seed pods and they will put on some new growth and beautiful foliage and maybe some blooms. I've just really struggled with this area knowing what to do with it. And so this year I'm just going to pop in a few dahlias that we have left over here in this spot where it's just bare. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and just pop in some of those color spots we just got with the salvia and the two blocks. And then we're just going to keep it watered. But it does have a beautiful view. Soon I'm going to get a tree for this area, which is going to be probably a crab apple because I love that bloom in the spring. But it has a view that goes on and on and on from this point, so I don't want anything too tall. Thank you. 
so last winter we lost some of our rosemary or at least it got damaged enough um we had a couple cold days and generally they'll you know we'll have one cold day or something like that for a few hours or something and it doesn't hurt it at all this is the first year that we kind of had some issues with it so i'm just cutting back the rosemary it's not looking so good so i'm not sure if i'm going to take some of the plants out we'll see um but just tidying it back up so I feel like I'm giving this garden a really bad haircut and it's one of those things where I'm going to throw some compost on it, a few plants, and uh, that's like putting the dippity doo in and styling it and fingers crossed that in a couple months by, by August it will be putting on a show again because this looks pretty pathetic. But all gardens kind of have to do that. They go through these growing pains as it moves on to different um, stages of its life, I guess. So yeah, it doesn't look all that great. But I have a vision and I think as soon as I'm done here, cleaning up and tidying up and then styling this table, it's gonna look beautiful. So I just finished up the little succulent grouping. I just went shopping in the little cottage greenhouse. This one definitely needs some water and some love. So I put a little fertilizer in. I'm gonna clean it up and get that one looking better, but I'm not sure how this is all gonna go. I potted up this guy here because I really like it. And I thought that would be really pretty, but it might just be you know, too windy, too much for it at first. But here is an overall look of the garden. It's not done yet, but at least it's a start to it and we'll keep working on it for the next week or so. And it should be done um, before July 1st. I felt like this needed just a little bit more. So Riley picked up some things just at Wabra Nursery and Ace Hardware because we had to go to both places. So I'm gonna work on this just a little bit more and get it spiffed up. Well, it went from looking a little blah to being um, very lush, I think. I like how it turned out. Uh, all the color is beautiful. So I was just gonna give you a closer look at everything that I popped in. I'm not sure how I feel about this, so I left them in their pots, and the other reason is I'm a little bit tired, so I decided to wait and do that, but little terracotta pots in that little shelf would be super cute, so I might do that tomorrow. I hung this beautiful fuchsia. I think it looks very, very voluptuous. On this other side, we popped in all of those begonias. I had this little trellisy thing. I'm not sure if I'm in love with it or not, but it does kind of match the etching on this hanging basket so it's just holding up that um fern looking thing because i we do get some wind and it blows over so i thought well that will help it stay until it gets secure and i might take that out 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And until next time, much success in all you do and grow. And we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye.